Hey everyone, this is Anam. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be discussing the summary of lesson number 2, We're Not Afraid to Die from the book Hornbill of class 11. Let's begin. The narrator, Gordon Cook, is a descendant of Captain James Cook, who is famous for his round-the-world voyage. Captain James Cook was a famous traveler and he's known for his round-the-world voyage. The narrator, a 37 years old businessman and his wife Mary wanted to duplicate the round the world voyage made 200 years earlier by Captain James Cook. This lesson is an interesting account of how the family, how the narrator's family had a close encounter with death during their voyage. So obviously you must have understood that the narrator, he just did not go alone. He took his family along with him on, his, on this journey and in his family he had his wife Mary, his daughter Susan who was only seven years old at that time and his son Jonathan who was only six. So this lesson describes their, uh, describes their courage with which they faced this difficult situation. The chapter deals with the theme of human nature of exploring the unknown and taking on challenges. So as humans, we all love to have new experiences and explore new things, having new adventures. So the narrator, like I said, he was a very adventurous person. The second theme is human instinct for survival. When faced with danger, every human has this instinct for survival. One would do anything to save his life. Then we have uh, bravery, grit, courage and determination. The narrator's family, the team, they showed exemplary courage and determination. Then we have optimism and presence of mind. So as we read the story, we will understand that the story deals with all these themes. Let's begin now. We're Not Afraid to Die is a story of a dangerous journey of a family. Like I said, the narrator Gordon Cook decided to duplicate the round-the-world voyage made 200 years ago by Captain James Cook. To fulfill this dream, he and his wife Mary spent 16 years. They prepared themselves for 16 years. For 16 long years, he spent, uh, they spent all their leisure time, all their free time in learning and improving their seafaring skills in British waters. Seafaring skills means uh, the skills which uh, one is required to have in case uh, he wants to go for a journey like this, a dangerous journey like this. They took a professionally built boat, Waywalker, for this journey. Waywalker was, a well, uh, was well fitted with all the necessary equipments and they tested this boat in the roughest of waters for months. The initial uh, and finally and in, in July 1976 the narrator set sail. He started his journey with his wife Mary, his six year old son Jonathan and seven-year-old daughter Susan from Plymouth, England. The initial part of their journey was quite smooth. They sailed down the west coast of Af Africa to Cape Town without any problem. Here, they took on board two crewmen, Larry Vigil and Herb Siegler. Larry Vigil was an American and Herb Siegler was a Swiss, means he belonged to Switzerland. Why did they uh, take these two uh, people along with them? Because both Harry, uh, Herb and Larry, they were very experienced and the narrator was going to face the world's roughest sea, which is the Southern Indian Ocean. So he took these two experienced uh, people along with, the, uh, along with them so that they could do it easily. On the second day out of Cape Town, they began to encounter strong winds. The narrator got worried at the size of the waves. They were very high. On December 25th, they reached 
3500 kilometers east of Cape Town. They celebrated Christmas and kept their spirits high despite the poor weather conditions. So 25th December onwards, the situation, the, the weather was really go, uh, getting worse and worse. On January 2nd, the situation got worse. The waves became gigantic. To slow down the boat, they dropped the storm jib and made other arrangements to face the sea. They wore oil skins and life jackets also. The first sign of the coming disaster came at about 6 p.m. 6 p.m. on what day? January 2nd. A wave hit the ship. A tremendous explosion shook the deck. A torrent of water entered the ship. The narrator was badly injured. His head smashed into the wheel. He accepted his approaching death. He thought he was going to die, but somehow, quite unexpectedly, his head came out of the water. The boat, Waywalker, was sinking. The strong waves were tossing him around the deck. His left ribs uh, cracked and his mouth was filled with blood and broken teeth. Suddenly, his wife appeared and screamed that the decks were smashed and the boat was full of water. The two, crew, uh, the two crewmen, Larry and Vigil, started pumping out water. Like I said, uh, the uh, wave walker was hit by a strong high wave. So, uh, it was filled with water. Water uh, started to enter into the boat. So, both these crewmen, Larry and Vigil, they started pumping out water. Their belongings swam here and there in deep water. The narrator somehow managed to reach the children's cabin to inquire after their well-being and found them safe. The children said they were fine. Sue, Susan, told that her head hurt a little bit, but otherwise she was fine. With no time to worry about the bumped bumped head of his daughter, he struggled back on deck. And having found a hammer, screws and canvas, he tried to make some necessary repairs to save the ship from sinking. Using uh, this canvas, he deflected the water over the side. But then the other problems arose. The hand pumps started to block with the debris. Debris means uh, broken pieces of various things. The boat uh, was damaged. So many things were broken. They were swimming into the water here and there. So this debris blocked the hand pumps. The electric pumps short circuited and water level rose threateningly. The captain used another pump and kept in the, uh, which was kept in the chart room to pump out the water from the boat. They tried to make contact with other ships but got no replies to Mayday calls. Mayday calls means, uh, you know, calls to seek help from the other ships, right? But they did not uh, get any answers. The narrator's daughter, Susan, she was uh, called Sue, she was badly injured. Her head was swollen, her eyes got dark and got, she got a deep cut on her arm. But she showed exemplary courage by not worrying the captain, her father, who was trying so hard to save everyone. On January 3rd, the pumps controlled the water level. They could take rest for two hours in, in, in rotation. So, so far they were all continuously pumping out the water, but now the situation was uh, somewhat under control. So they were taking turns. They were taking rest and then turn wise they were pumping out the water. But still, 
they had a leak below the water line they had survived for 15 hours since the wave hit their boat they wanted to reach australia but it did not seem feasible the wave walker would hold together long in uh, the wave walker would not you know hold together long enough for them to reach australia it was seeming next to impossible the narrator checked the charts again and calculated that there were two small islands a few hundred kilometers to the east one of them the eel amsterdam amsterdam was a french scientific base the narrator wanted to reach there on january 4th after 36 hours of continuous pumping they had pumped out most of the water mary found some food and they ate after almost two days after this the narrator went into uh, the the narrator went to just uh, see his children his son jonathan exhibited rare courage by saying that we're not afraid to die if we all are together on hearing this new determination and courage revived the captain to fight the sea so the captain gordon cook he was losing his hope but when he heard his son his six year old son saying that we are not afraid to die if we all are together so this particular thing gave new courage new determination to the captain and he decided to fight back that evening the narrator and his wife mary sat together they both felt the end was near but still they were not ready to give up hope eventually the storm slowed down by january 6th the narrator after checking his charts asked larry to steer a course of 185 degrees at around 2 pm he expected to see the island il amsterdam at about 5 pm but he was not sure he was just making a conjecture he was not sure about anything he was so tired that he dozed off when uh, he slept for some time and when he woke up at uh, 6 pm he thought that they must have missed the island he was disheartened he was heartbroken but his children came and hugged him calling him the best daddy and the best captain in the world as they had found the island they had found the island il amsterdam it was right in front of their eyes to them it appeared to be the most beautiful island in the world as it had just saved their life so in this way courage conviction presence of mind and above all strength of the family brought them successfully out of this ordeal so their life was saved and they completed their journey that's all about it if you found the video useful if you understood the summary then please subscribe to my channel and you can also leave comments thank you